The public health issues that face our communities are varied and complex. To effectively address those issues, the involvement of people from a variety of backgrounds, training, and expertise is required. In Minnesota, there's only one multidisciplinary public health organization that routinely mobilizes all these constituencies to work together to better the health of the public. It's the Minnesota Public Health Association. On today's episode of A Public Health Journal, we'll be talking about MPHA and some of the many public health issues with which the organization is actively involved. Please stay tuned. Welcome to A Public Health Journal, a program that explores public health issues facing our society today and tomorrow. The host of the show is Dr. Ed Ellinger, Commissioner of Health for the State of Minnesota. A Public Health Journal is sponsored by the Minnesota Department of Health and the Hennepin County Human Services and Public Health Department, all working together towards the goal of healthy people living in healthy communities. Welcome to A Public Health Journal. Today we're going to look at a variety of public health issues from the perspective of the Minnesota Public Health Association, the organization that represents the diverse group of public health professionals working throughout Minnesota. In particular, we'll be looking at how public health is being represented in the healthcare reform debate and in other policy decisions. Joining us in our discussion today is Ann Byery, current president of MPHA. Ann is a public health nurse who worked 27 years in local public health in various positions and is currently employed as an adjunct faculty at St. Cloud State University where she teaches public health nursing. Ann, welcome to the program. Yeah, thank you. You've been in public health for a while and I'd like you to think back, how did you get into public health as a profession 27 or more years ago? Um, well, thinking back, um, uh, which that was a long time ago, um, it was really job related um, and uh, there was uh, an excess of nurses. Nurses were being laid off in early 1984 and uh, there was a position opening in public health in Meeker County and um, I applied for the position and got it and uh, really uh, found my passion and really it never changed jobs after that. So. Um, it fit with uh, the things that I learned in school, um, went to a parochial school and certainly learned about things like social justice and, and doing good and this fit very well with, uh, with those things that I learned as mm -hmm. a child. So how would you describe public health to the audience out here saying, what is this public health stuff? Well, public health is very complex and very uh, diverse. It uh, focuses on populations and it uh, focuses on uh, communities and prevention. Uh, a lot of the work in public health is done through policy. Uh, for example, when I was in Meeker McLeod in Sibley counties, it took me 10 years of work working with county commissioners to get them to really um, latch on to the issue of smoke-free workplaces. And so uh, the work in public health does not move quickly, but you need to have an end goal in, in sight. Hmm. So when you talk about public health as working in policy, so give me some more examples. You got the, you know, the smoke-free ordinance, a policy that says mm -hmm. you can't smoke in a work site or you can't smoke in a bar or restaurant. What are some of the other policy things that, that you've been seeing over the years that have really been helpful to, to public health? Um, a big one is immunizations and the immunization laws and requirements, um, especially for uh, young children. I look at my own children who were born in the six, late 60s, early 70s, and uh, they, there wasn't the focus on their getting their immunizations. I remember them getting caught up when they were like in fourth or fifth grade. Um, whereas now the focus is on getting kids immunized at a very young age and pre preventing disease that way. Um, another area that we were very involved with a number, a few years back in local public health was um, working on meth ordinances. And in rural Minnesota, uh, methamphetamine and uh, cooking of the meth was a big public health issue. And this was something that we worked with uh, our county boards, our community health board, 
um, and county attorneys, our sheriff's department, uh, and received assistance from the Minnesota Department of Health to develop a local ordinance that um, dealt with meth uh, labs and cleanup, mm -hmm. which was a really um, big issue. I remember hearing uh, a nurse talking about a meth lab where that was being cooked and they were using somehow the bathtub um, and then the children were given a bath in that same bathtub and so um, there were also uh, kind of some protocols that needed to be developed for health care providers with how to treat children that came from those various kinds of meth labs. So, so now you're working for St. Cloud State. Right. Uh, do you still consider that public health? Um, yes. And, and, and so, but it's not working for a public health agency? No, it's not. Um, I am in a public health agency with a group of about 10 students and uh, kind of guiding them through uh, public health and their experiences and they have uh, theory and lecture that goes along with this, but really uh, looking at wanting them to see public health in practice. Mm -hmm. And um, agencies really do a lot, uh, local public health agencies, to provide a good experience for these students. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some who really uh, kind of latch on to it and, and um, I think will end up in the field of public health, and then there are others that really um, are looking at doing a different field of nursing. You know, certainly as we look back over the last 100 years, some of the public health issues in the early 20th century, infectious diseases, mm -hmm. sanitation, what are the public health issues now that, you know, we've gotten rid of some of the, the, the big killers in the past. What are the public health issues that you're seeing now in the last, you know, 20, 30 years that face Minnesotans? Um, well, definitely uh, infectious disease is still a significant public health issue. Uh, we live now in a more global world. Uh, infectious disease outbreak is a plane ride away. And um, so uh, we do have systems uh, within the state and local public health to do surveillance um, so that we catch uh, diseases early and can intervene early before it spreads to large populations. Um, I think um, another area is uh, just uh, chemical health. Mm. And um, um, this uh, would cover alcohol, tobacco, and other drug use. And within the agencies I worked with, as well as many agencies in the state of Minnesota, um, there was a focus on working with communities to reduce, uh, especially youth, use and access to things like tobacco and alcohol. I remember um, back in the 90s, one of uh, my health educators did an assessment of, the, uh, of our community, and she found that tobacco products were right next to school supplies. Mm -hmm. Um, in a local pomida store, and this was seen as acceptable. It took uh, quite a bit to um, convince our commissioners that it was the right thing to pass an ordinance that limited youth access to tobacco. All right. Well, you're president of MPHA. I want to talk a little bit about what you're doing with that, but first we need to take a little break. Okay. We'll be back right after this message. Separate raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back. We're talking about public health and the Minnesota Public Health Association with the current president, Ann Bayeri. 
And uh, let's talk about MPHA, uh, the Public Health Association, Minnesota Public Health Association, and you're the president. How long has MPHA been around in this state? MPHA uh, traces its roots back to 1907 and um, traces uh, it back to the State Sanitary Conference, which was an organization of local health officials um, that met yearly for an annual conference. Um, in 1947, I believe, the organization expanded its, its membership to include people who worked in public health um, and were not necessarily health officers. And the organization was recognized as an affiliate by the American Public Health Association in uh, 1948. Right. So what's, what's the membership like? Is it all people who work in health departments or is it broader than that? Uh, the membership of MPHA is very broad. Uh, prior to my becoming involved with, uh, with leadership in MPHA, my uh, connections were pretty heavily with local health departments and the Minnesota Department of Health. And I've gotten to meet a whole new group of people, which uh, has been uh, really quite interesting and broadened my view of public health. Um, it's people who work for health plans, for hospitals. It might be community health workers. Um, students, we um, do a fair amount of recruiting members from students, um, epidemiologists and people who work in environmental health, um, people who work for nonprofits, so a whole hmm. variety of groups. What, what drew you to MPHA? Why did you join when you're looking back? Um, I, um, I felt like I needed to support public health in a broader way and MPHA offers uh, those of us who work in political um, kind of settings where you have to be careful what you say politically, um, but it offered me the opportunity to speak as an individual and to have credible and correct information. Hmm. So, so what would draw people from health plans, for example, to the Public Health Association? That's, they're sort of on the, the medical care side, if we look at it as public health and medical care. What would draw those folks to, to MPHA? Um, well, health, pl health plans are more and more becoming involved with public health, keeping the, their members healthy because that reduces costs. And MPHA um, allows them, as well as anyone who is a member, the opportunity to work with a diverse body um, or a diverse group uh, to work on public health issues that promote the health of all Minnesotans. Hmm. So, and how does, you had mentioned the American, APHA or the American Public Health Association, how does MPHA relate to that national organization? Uh, APHA is a very important um, partner uh, for MPHA. Uh, we depend on them for information, especially uh, with uh, what is going on in the f at the federal level. Um, for example, they send frequent updates about the Affordable Care Act. Um, and uh, they offer us technical assistance. They offer us support to send some of our members to various kinds of uh, meetings and conferences. Also through APHA, we belong to a group of, I believe it's six or seven states, um, the Great Lakes Coalition, mm -hmm. where we work on uh, public health in issues that are um, of interest to all of the states and currently that issue is health impact assessment hmm. that we're working on. Okay. Yeah well that was one of my other questions how do you relate to the states around us you know we have mm -hmm. you know public health issues certainly cross uh, state boundaries so the issues in Wisconsin and Iowa right. North and South Dakota are a lot of the same issues how do you work with other public health agencies in other states? Um, the It really is focused more so on um, a, the issues and writing uh, policy papers. 
um, and also just sharing uh, information. How do you do this? How do you recruit and retain members? What do you use for your website? Um, that kind of thing, um, but primarily working on um, on policy yeah. kinds of things. Now you talked about health impact assessments and working with the Great Lakes uh, Coalition. Uh, what is a health impact assessment and how is this yes. a public health issue? Um, health impact assessments, as I understand it, and I'm not um, uh, an, uh, certainly not an expert on it, but um, as things are, uh, for example, there's construction. Uh, we're, one of our members is very involved with uh, the new Viking Stadium and really promoting that there needs to be um, a health impact assessment done and things need to be looked at in terms of how it's constructed, um, how does it affect uh, neighborhoods, how um, is there walkability, bikeability, mm. some of those kinds of things that, mm. how does that, how can it be done in a way that has a positive impact on, um, on the public's health. Mm. And I think, you know, I was just recently with uh, my husband and traveled to North Dakota to the Williston and Dickinson mm. area and saw the effect of the oil wells on um, kind of the, on the environment, on how people lived and um, it didn't seem to me as though there was much thought given to the, the health impact of what is being done. Yeah, well, we have a lot of projects, like the, you know, like you say, the, the Viking Stadium, light rail going through, yes. uh, fracking for oil and gas, that you know, as an economic ac activity is one thing, but it has impacts mm -hmm. on the community around it for, for housing, for education, for social services, and mm -hmm. in the environment. So, the, and so is this the kind of thing that a health impact assessment will look at, all of those factors? Um, yes, and then, uh, really promote uh, with the decision-making boards, the policy makers, that they consider that. There is a, um, a move afoot to really promote, promote this with legislators, mm. but um, there is the issue of those who are concerned about the economic impact of that kind of thing. All right. Well, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the other issues that MPHA is looking at, but first we'll take another little break. We'll be back right after this message. physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. So keep them active and eating well every day. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. Welcome back. We're talking with Ann Byerry, the current president of the Minnesota Public Health Association. And we talked a little bit about health impact assessments as one of the things that MPHA is working on. What are some of the other issues that you know, you've been focusing on during your year as president? Um, uh, MPHA, well, first of all, we're an organization of volunteers, and so we um, um, can do as much as our volunteers are willing to, are willing to contribute. Um, and we have some really uh, great people um, involved with our, uh, primarily our policy and advocacy committee that works on uh, policy issues. And uh, we set priorities, and for this last year, um, one of our priorities was uh, public health infrastructure and public health funding. Um, we know that uh, throughout the nation that there's been a significant loss of public health funding, and um, um, this is something that is important to uh, maintain in order that uh, there can be a response to a communicable disease or um, um, a um, emergency, some kind of a public health emergency or even emergencies that don't, um, aren't necessarily um, 
only public health, such as tornadoes or, or floods. Um, and so we've really been promoting that, um, that maintaining this infrastructure at the state and local level and also within our communities is very, very important. Um, another area that we have focused on um, this last year is uh, maintaining funding for SHIP. And the statewide health improvement program. The statewide program. health improvement program. Um, and this is um, a program that is throughout the state of Minnesota. Um, now it is um, more focused in specific counties, but it started out in all 87 counties and uh, focused on obesity prevention and tobacco use prevention. And um, we know that outcomes do not come in one or two years, we really feel strongly that um, the, um, there needs to be continued funding to really, really show the outcomes. And um, what is being done is based on evidence and so um, is, um, is based in science. We're not just, uh, just doing things because we think that. Mm -hmm. So, so you talked about the, the infrastructure of public health and, and the lack of investment. Why do you think that lack of investment is going on? Is if you look back over the last 100 years, you know, we've gained 30 years of life mm -hmm. expectancy, <clears throat> and 25 of those years were because of public health. It seems like that would be a good investment. Why, why is the investment in public health uh, not as powerful and as strong, as robust as it should be? Um, well, first of all, uh, people, policymakers, and other funders like to invest in programs. Um, and just uh, something like maintaining infrastructure and capacity is something that is not always uh, seen as a wise investment. Is there a political climate that's changed with related uh, to? Yes, definitely. There's concern about uh, government and government interference in, um, in our uh, lives and um, some of the things that public health does. For example, uh, the regulations that ensure that we have clean air and water. Mm -hmm. um, those are things that um, um, some people see as government interference. So MPHA was not a governmental agency. No. It says you got a lot of you know private sector folks in there, and and can they advocate for you know this sort of investment both yes, on the, they in, can. the in the governmental side and the non governmental side? Uh, the what MPHA brings to the table is um, because of our diverse membership. There's a broad group of differing communities that our members can mobilize. Um, to bring to policymakers important public health issues as they're making decisions. Okay. What, over the years, if you look back, uh, MPHA has been around, like you say, for you know about a hundred years or so. What are some of the, the successes that MPHA has had as a volunteer organization uh, in in the state of Minnesota? Um, one important one is um, MPHA was very involved with the uh, passage in 1976 of the Community Health Services Act. And that is um, the act that created, I, I believe Minnesota went from a, something a thousand or eleven hundred health boards to something in the range of 50 where there was a, a little broader span of control and, and more consistency. And uh, this uh, state and local partnership um, uh, contributed to uh, the good health outcomes that Minnesota um, had over the years. Uh, MPHA is also involved in health care reform in the 90s. Um, I remember uh, MPHA did uh, forums throughout the state where this was discussed. Um, another issue that has come up throughout the years several times is minors' consent. And minors' consent is a law that allows minors um, to receive specific kinds of services such as family planning or alcohol, drug, tre drug treatment, um, mental health services without their parents' consent. And this has been very controversial um, 
And so it just, we, we are going through our um, files, our historical files, and it seems like it's popped up several times as, mm -hmm. as an issue MPHA has dealt with. What are some of the other issues as we get wrapping down here to, uh, that MPHA should be looking at? What are the issues in the next couple of years that MPHA will probably take on as a public health agency? Um, well, one of the, the things that um, um, APHA is providing us with technical assistance on is uh, supporting now the implementation of the Affordable Care Act. Um, and MPHA will have um, our diversity of members to uh, speak to policymakers about the importance of this act and um, what it provides to um, what it provides to the citizens of our state. Mm -hmm. So, what what is MPHA given to you as a public health professional? Um, it, um, I think, uh, one of the things that I have really enjoyed with MPHA is meeting younger public health professionals and seeing their passion and commitment to public health, and with just a little bit of mentoring from. Uh, someone who's more experienced, it seems like they just take off and do great things. Good. So Well, great. Well, thanks for being here and thanks for sharing some of your perspective and a little bit of your passion that over the last uh, 27 <laughs> to 30 years. Thank you, Anne. Okay. I'll be back with a closing comment right after this message. Lead paint poisoning affects 1 million children today. If you're pregnant or have young children and your home was built before 1978, you could be at risk. Learn how to protect your family. To find your home's danger zones, the health effects, or just to find help, log on to leadfreekids.org. Although we have state and local health departments that are charged with providing a variety of public health services, public health is not just their responsibility. Public health is the responsibility of all of us. Public health is not just a place of employment. It is more of a philosophy of life. If you're concerned about the overall health of your community, if you think health is both an individual and a societal responsibility, if you think being well means more than just being physically healthy, or if you'd rather prevent a problem than treat it, then you are a public health worker. No matter where you work, you can advance the health of the public by promoting programs and activities that improve the overall health of the people in your community. And all of us need to be public health workers because, as the Institute of Medicine said, public health is what we, as a society, do collectively to assure the conditions in which people can be healthy. People working together can do a lot more than individuals working alone. So today and every day, celebrate public health and celebrate your role in making our world a better place to live. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you can join us again next time on a Public Health Journal.